Cord Blood Banking 101. This video is designed to provide you with a concise overview of cord blood banking and explain your options for preserving and storing your child's umbilical cord blood. What is cord blood? Once your baby is born, the delivering physician clamps off the umbilical cord and the cord is cut to separate you from the baby. Within a few minutes, the placenta, which is connected to the umbilical cord, is delivered either through the vagina or through your abdomen in the case of a cesarean section. The placenta and the umbilical cord are filled with your baby's blood that would otherwise be thrown out as medical waste. However, by saving your child's cord blood, you can potentially save that child's life in the future. Through medical research and advancements, cord blood has been found to contain hundreds of millions of stem cells that can potentially be used to treat many childhood and adult diseases. Stem cells are unique as they have the ability to transform into other cells throughout the body. Everyone has stem cells in their bodies, but as we age, that number of viable stem cells drastically declines, which is why collection at birth is so important. Stem cells preserved from umbilical cords have been successfully used in the treatment of more than 80 life-threatening diseases, including certain types of cancers, genetic disorders, and neurologic conditions. Studies are ongoing to determine other potential uses for stem cell therapy, including heart disease, diabetes, autism, and traumatic brain injury. Who can benefit from cord blood? If you bank your child's cord blood, you will have stem cells that are a 100% match for that child, and there's no risk of rejecting it if used in treatment for that child. There are, however, certain diseases that are not treatable with your own stem cells. For example, if your child is born with a genetic blood disorder, it may be helpful to receive stem cells from a donor who does not have that same genetic disorder. In that case, a sibling's stem cells make a great alternative. Cord blood taken from one sibling can be successfully used as treatment for another sibling. One out of four siblings are a perfect match, and three out of four siblings are at least a partial match. Transplants that use cord blood from a relative are twice as likely to be successful as transplants from a non-relative. Process for collecting cord blood. If you decide to collect your baby's cord blood, your physician will use a kit similar to this one to drain the stem cells into a collection bag. The cord blood collection process is done the same way during a cesarean section as it is following a vaginal delivery. Collection of cord blood will not interfere in any way with your birth plan and your partner can still cut the umbilical cord. Once the sample is collected, it is labeled and prepared for pickup by a medical courier and delivered to the processing and storage laboratory. Options for collection and storage. There are three options available for cord blood collection and storage. Dispose of it, public banking, and private banking. It is important to decide prior to your delivery which option for cord blood collection is right for you and your family. Option one, cord blood disposal. If you choose not to store your child's cord blood at either a public or private bank, the delivering physician will dispose of the umbilical cord, blood, and stem cells it contains as medical waste after your delivery. Option two, public cord blood banking. Some hospitals in larger cities offer public banking for donation of cord blood. These banks will typically accept cord blood with no upfront fee. That cord blood will be made available to anyone needing a stem cell transplant. Publicly banked cord blood will not be made available specifically for the donor or their family. Only a small percentage of publicly donated units are actually stored. Option three, private cord blood banking. The only option to save your child's cord blood for the exclusive use of your family is to privately bank it. There are many companies that offer private cord blood banking, so it is important to research and register with the company that best fits your family's needs prior to your delivery. When selecting a private cord blood bank, it is important to evaluate their collection and transportation methods, their processing and testing procedures, and their storage capabilities. 
Private banks charge an initial collection fee and an annual storage fee. Many ongoing clinical trials researching the potential uses for stem cell therapy, which include trials for autism, diabetes, and traumatic brain injury, will only admit patients with their own cord blood. Some private storage laboratories offer you the ability to store the tissue and plasma from the umbilical cord as well. The umbilical cord tissue is a rich source of mesenchymal stem cells that have the ability to transform into various types of tissue. While there is no current human therapies using mesenchymal cells from the umbilical cord tissue, there are numerous ongoing studies for uses in the future. Researchers are optimistic the tissue will one day be useful in treatment of brain, spinal cord, and musculoskeletal disorders and injuries. No matter what option you select, you must choose prior to your child's birth. If you do not bring a collection kit with you to the delivery of your child, your physician will have no choice but to dispose of the cord blood and tissue as medical waste. Please be sure to talk with your healthcare provider about your decision at your next visit. I wish you the best of luck with the rest of your pregnancy.